Welcome to part two of my Blender tutorial series on how to create this sci-fi robot drone character animation in Blender. In this part, we're gonna be modeling the legs or the arms, whatever you think they are. We're gonna be modeling like the little grabber things and the little gun and stuff that he has on his arms. And then we're also going to be rigging the entire character. So by the end of this, you'll have a completely 3D modeled robot drone character and it'll be completely rigged. And then after this, we're gonna be doing the materials and the rendering and the animation and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and start to model the legs. So this is where we left off in part one. We just modeled the head and the body. Let's go ahead and start modeling the legs now. So I'm gonna press Shift C to make sure the 3D cursor's in the center of our scene. And then I'll press Shift A, and I'm going to add a circle. I'm just going to bring this circle down, scale it down like this. So we're first gonna be modeling that little area where the arm is coming out of the body. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, scale this down a little bit more, and then I will press E and extrude this up, press Z and bring it up on the Z axis, just something like that. And then I'm going to Alt select this, we'll press E and S, scale it down, and then I'll press E and Z and just bring it down like that. Okay, so now let's press Control 2 to add a subsurf modifier. I'll shade this object smooth, and then we need to add some loop cuts here. So I'll press Control R, add a loop cut there, Control R, add a loop cut there, Control R, add another one there, and that looks pretty good. Now the normals need to be recalculated, so in edit mode I'm gonna select everything and press Shift N, and that'll recalculate the normals. And then I'm going to actually duplicate this object, so I'll press Shift D, Z, and bring it down, because this object here is gonna be rotating, kinda like this, and then this object is just gonna be up in the robot's body. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna Alt click on this, X and delete it, and then Alt click on this, X and delete vertices. And then I'll hold down Alt and select this, and then press F to fill that face. And then this top area right here, I need to fill this in, so I'll Alt select this ring right here. I'll press E and S, bring it down, and then press F to fill that. And then I need to press Control R and add a loop cut right there. Okay, looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna start to add some like hinges so that we can make the uh, robot's arms or legs, whatever they are. Actually, I think they're arms because he's kind of floating. But anyways, uh, let's tab into edit mode. I'm going to press Shift A and add a cube. I'll just bring this cube down. We'll scale it down a bit. I'm just gonna bring it over here and then I'll press S and X and make it thinner. Just bring it over there just like that. I'm going to press three to go to the face select, just select this top face right here, and then I'll press X and delete faces. So now that's just uh, going straight up right there. Now to select this entire thing without selecting this thing, I'm going to hover my mouse over it and press L and that'll select everything that's linked to that mesh. I'll bring it up and just stick it kind of inside there. And then I'll press, uh, actually I wanna make it a little bit thinner. So I'll press S and X, make it a little bit thinner there. And then I wanna make it a little bit fatter. So I'll press S and Y, make it a bit thicker there. Bring it down just a little bit. Actually, I think I wanna make it a little bit uh, taller too. So I'll press S and Z, bring that up. Okay, then I'll press Control R, add a loop cut there because we wanna sharpen this out up again because it's you know a metal robot and there's kind of metal hinges, so we want it to be very sharp. We don't want it to be super smooth. Add a loop cut in there to make that less. I do wanna have this right here. In object mode, I will just shade that smooth, but I'm gonna add another loop cut right in there. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna have these be the hinges and then right in between this, I'm gonna have another piece. So I'm gonna press L with my mouse over here to select that and I'll press Shift D, press X, move my mouse over and just bring that over there so that we have these two pieces. And then also I wanna make this round area be a bit more down. So I will press three for side view, tab into edit mode, press one for face select, I mean one for vertex select and then press Z and go into wireframe. And then we'll just deselect everything B and box select this, and then I'll just drag it down just like that. So that is a much more round. Now I also wanna add some things that kinda of look like bolts right in here, cause I think that looks pretty cool, makes it look pretty cool. So I'll tab back into edit mode, I'll press Shift A, I'm gonna add a circle, 
And then this circle, I want it to have six vertices so that it can look like one of those screws or bolts. Now I will bring it down, press G, bring it over, scale it down. We're just gonna bring it right in here. I can press period on the number pad to jump over to it. And then I want to rotate it so it's you know parallel with this metal piece. So I'll press R, X, not X, Y, and type in 90 and then enter. So now it's rotated up and down along with this metal piece. So I'll scale this down a little bit, bring this over here. I'm just gonna bring it inside the metal piece and then I'll press E and X, bring it up, and then I'll press F and fill that. Okay, now right now that doesn't really look like a bolt. So what I'm gonna do is press L, select that entire bolt and press Control B. And then I'll just scroll my mouse wheel up one just to give it a little more detail just like that. Now you can see, again, we have some shading issues. You can see this is darker, whereas this is lighter. So I'll have to go into edit mode and press shift N to recalculate the normals. Okay, let's scale this down a little bit, bring it in. I wanna make a random rotation on the bolt just to add a little bit more realism. So I'll press R, X, and just give it a random rotation. Then I'll press shift D, click with my middle mouse wheel, bring it over here and then press R and X again, just give it a random rotation, just like that. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's tab into edit mode again. I'm going to press L and L and just select these two bolts. I'll press Shift D and then click with my middle mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis and just bring it over here. And then to flip these so that they're going the opposite direction, I can press S, X, and then I'm gonna type in negative one. So we're flipping, we're kind of like flipping it inside out, but now it's the correct way around. Now, again, we need to recalculate the normals once again, because we flipped it inside out. So I'll press shift N and there we go. Now it's correct. Just move it inside that metal piece. And now we have these different bolts. And then if you wanted to, you could give it a random rotation. It's so small that it's gonna be hard to notice, but you could just do that. All right, there we go. So now in between this, we are going to add another piece. Let's save this again. So I'm gonna go file and save. And then right here, I want there to be less of a space cause that's a little too much space. So I'll press G and Z and bring it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the uh, second piece of the arm. Let's press shift C again, make sure that's in the center there and then press shift A and I'm gonna add another cube. I'll bring this cube down. Tab and edit mode, I'm gonna make it really small and thin. So just scale it down so that's a little like arm piece, a little bit fatter, just like that. Okay, and then I want to tab and edit mode. I'm going to press control B, give it a bevel, and then I can shade that smooth. There we go, we got the arm piece now. Now in here, I'm actually going to go into edit mode, press control R, to add some loop cuts. I wanna add two loop cuts. So I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up and just click and then click again to place that. And then I want to scale these out a little bit so that this is a little bit round. So I'll press S and Z, just bring that up a little bit and then place it just like that. So now you can see up here, if I just hide this, you can see it's doing that there as well. I think I might want this to be just a little bit longer. So I'll tab into edit mode. Go into wireframe, A to deselect everything and just box like this and then G and Z, bring it down, just make it a little bit longer. Now, in order to make this kind of be more realistic like an actual hinge, we're gonna need some kind of hinge piece right there. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode here. I'll press shift A and I'm gonna add another circle. Now this circle, I'm just going to on the vertices here, set this to like eight and then I will bring this down. We're gonna rotate it, so R, X, uh, y actually, we're gonna type in 90 and then enter. We'll scale this down. I can go to wireframe mode here so that we can see it. And then I'll press one for front view, bring it up. So G and Z, bring that up there, scale it down a little bit more. And then I will press G, click with my middle mouse wheel, pull it over. And then I want to extrude that out. So the uh, hinge thing is going right through uh, the arm. So I'll press E, uh, X, and then bring it over. And now you can see it's going right through there. 
Now I need to recalculate the normals again, so I'll select everything, Shift N, recalculate the normals, and then I'll just shade that smooth again, just to sm smooth out that object. So I want it there to be another hinge right here because I need another piece, like the lower half arm of the arm. So I will tab into edit mode here. Let's just uh, click on this and press L. That'll select that entire hinge. Then I can press Shift D, Z, and bring it down somewhere around there. That looks good. Okay, now the second piece of the arm, I want it to be kind of thick. So I'm going to select this. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it because we're going to be using some of this, but we're going to edit it and make it look a bit better. I'll press Z, bring it down here. And then I want to flip it because it needs to be pointed down. So I'll press R, X, and type in 180, 180 degrees. And then just bring this down right there. All right. Now I want this to be a square piece because I just think it looks pretty nice. So I'm going to tab into edit mode here, deselect everything, and then just press L and select this, and then X and delete vertices because we don't want that. Okay, so now we need to uh, merge these two together. So what I'm going to do is shift click on this and this and then go over here and then on the other side here shift click on this and this. So now we just have these four vertices two over here and two over here. I'm going to press F to fill that face so that it will be merged together and then I want to do that on this side too. So I'll shift click on these four vertices and press F to fill that. And then before we extrude this, I don't want these two center pieces to be selected because if we extrude that out, there's going to be some weird issues you can see. So I need to unselect these. So I'm going to press B and middle click, deselect that, B, middle click, and deselect that. So now we just have these outer areas. So now I'll move way out here and I'll press E and extrude this down. I'm going to press Z to constrain it to the Z axis and just bring out the second part of the arm. I want it to be about the same size as the top part. So something like that. And then you can see this is looking really weird. That's because we need to add some loop cuts. So I'll press Control R, bring that up. Double tap G, you can just bring it up even more. And then I'm gonna add a loop cut here and a loop cut here. Now it looks like I need to add one more loop cut right here. So I'll zoom out, press Control R, drag up. There we go, that's a lot nicer. Okay, let's save this again. I'm just gonna go file and save. I like to save a lot so that if Blender crashes, we don't have to redo anything because that's pretty frustrating. And you can see that it already has the bolts there. Now, if you wanna make these bolts have a random rotation again, you're not really gonna notice. It's gonna be kind of hard to see, but if you want to do it, just so that you know that you've done the best you can to make it realistic or whatever, you can do that. So I'm just gonna select these and give them random rotation. But you don't have to do that. You know, when you're looking out at the robot, it's gonna be really hard to notice those. All right, so the arm is almost done. What I need to do is make another area down here and then add another area for the claws. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A. Let's add another circle. I'm gonna press G and Z, bring it down here. Let's just zoom in here. I want to scale it down and then I want to rotate it because I want it to be like sideways. So I'll press R, X, not X, Y, type in 90 degrees. There we go. And then I'm going to move this over here. So I'll press G and X and bring it over, scale it down a little bit. And then it's really blocky. So let's smooth it out. So I'm going to click on add modifier, subdivision surface. Just make the levels two, scale it down a little bit more, and then let's tab into edit mode. I'll press E and X and bring it out to about there. This side is a little too long, so I'll alt select this and bring it in a little bit. And then we need to fill this, so I'll alt select this, F to fill it, and then I can just add a bevel here actually. So I'll press control B, just add a bevel and that'll sharpen up that edge. I want it to have a kind of a rotating hinge right here. So I'll tab into edit mode, alt select this. I'm gonna press E and S, scale it down a bit, and then E and extrude it out on the X, something like that. And then E, S, scale it up to about the same size. So you can go three for side view, just scale it up so it's the same size. And then I'll extrude it again on the X. And that way we have that little thing in there which the hinge can rotate on. Then I'll press F to fill that face and Control B to add a bevel. And now we just need to sharpen up this edge 
the different edges here. So I'll press Control R, bevel there, bevel there, not a bevel, just add a loop cut. There we go, okay. And add one more there. Now I actually want these two parts to be joined together because you can see there's not really any way for this to rotate on this. So I want them to be the same object. So what I'm gonna do is actually scale this down just a little bit because it's just a tiny bit too big. Move it over a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to select this, hold down shift and select this one last, and then I'll press control J and that'll join them together. And you can see that now they're one object. All right, let's go ahead and make the next part now. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode here, alt click on this loop, shift D and we'll duplicate that, bring it into the center here. And then I wanna make that a separate object. So I'll press P, separate by selection. So we can just tab back into object mode, select this object and then tab into edit mode here. Let's just bring it over, scale it down a little bit and just make a little tiny space in between these two. E and extrude them out. Again, just make a little tiny space in between this side here. And then I'll just select everything with A and then I'll press E and S. But again, I don't want it to be scaled out on every axis. So I'm gonna press Shift X and that way it'll be scaled on the Z and the Y but not the X. Okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna add some loop cuts. So Control R, Control R, and shade that smooth. Okay, I wanna make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna press S, Shift, X again, something like that. Okay, I need to recalculate normals again. So I'll select everything, press Shift N, and there we go, looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is add a piece that is extruding out of this. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, Let's press three for side view. I'm gonna press shift A and we're gonna add a cube. The cube is probably way up here. Yeah, let's just bring it down. We'll scale it down right in here, bring it over. And then let's scale it down so that it's uh, small enough to fit right in there. Bring it down, okay. Now let's press three to go to face select. Just select this face. And then we'll go to three for side view and I'll press E and extrude it down. I wanna make it probably almost the size as this circle here. So something like that. And then I wanna extrude out these two sides because these two sides are where the claw arms are gonna be. So I'll select this side, shift, select this side. So now that I have these selected, I'll press E to extrude, S to scale, Y on the Y axis and just bring that out something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna double tap A to select the whole thing. Actually, we don't wanna select this one. I'm just gonna deselect that, press L and select this cube. And then I'll press Control B and add a bevel just like that. Now I think this is a little too big going up, so I'm gonna tab into edit mode, press one for vertex select, Z to go wireframe. And I'll just box select this and bring it down so it's a bit thinner. And then I think this bottom side, maybe should be up a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is model the claw fingers. So I'm gonna press Shift A, let's add a circle. Press G, move the circle down, bring it into place. I'm just gonna bring it right up here for now. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode. Z for wireframe, I'm just going to box select this side. And then I'm gonna press G, click with my middle mouse wheel, just pull that out a bit. And then let's press E, bring it over, R to rotate, and then G and Z and bring it down. And then we'll also scale this down a bit. And then one more time, I'm just gonna press E, S, and R, rotate it over. Now you can see here that this tapers down and I don't really want it to do that. So what I'm gonna do is just press Control R. I'll just click and then click again to place that. And then what I can do is press Control I and select everything else and then just press X and delete vertices. And then to quickly fill these faces, I'm just gonna shift click on both of these and press F and then press F again and then press F again and it automatically will fill that. Okay, so now I can select everything and just press E and extrude this out and just make it to the size that I want, something like that. Okay, that's good. And then I need to recalculate the normals. So select everything, press Shift N and there we go. So now let's move this into place. I'm gonna bring this over right here. So let's tab back into edit mode, select everything and press Control B and give a bevel to the claw arm and then I can just shade that smooth. Okay, let's move the claw arm or the claw finger into place right there. 
maybe scale it down a little bit more. Then I wanna have another one on the other side here. So I'll tab into edit mode, make sure it's all selected and then press shift D, click with my middle mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis and just bring it over to something like that. Now these are going to be like rotating like this. So I need to have a hinge in there. So what I'm gonna do is just bring this out, give it a little bit more space so that there's about two widths. So this and this side, and then I can just select everything with A and bring the whole thing over. Just like, you know, what we did like up here, we're gonna add a hinge in there. So now I'm gonna add some bolts just like we did on the other object. So I'll click to set the 3D cursor right about here. Press shift A, let's add a circle on the circle vertices. Right here, I'm gonna set this to six again. Close that, and then let's just scale this down. I'm gonna rotate it on the uh, Y axis by 90 degrees, so type in 90, enter. Just scale this down, bring it out. And we're just gonna be modeling the same exact thing right here. So I will extrude this in, bring it in, and then Alt select this loop press F to fill it, and then hover my mouse over here, press L, that'll select all the linked vertices, and then I'll press Control B and just add a bevel to smooth that out. We'll just shade this object smooth. So there we go, now we have a bolt. I think I want this bolt to be a little bit farther out. And then you can give it a random rotation if you want, so R and X. Just give it a random rotation. Then we want this for the other side too. So I'm gonna press Shift D, bring this over. And then if you remember from the arms, I'm going to press S, X, negative one, enter. And then Shift N because the normals are recalculated, so we need to recalculate them. Okay, bring this in. And now you can see it is mirrored to the other side. And we can also give it a random rotation if you want. Okay, now the last thing before this claw hand is done is I need to add that um, hinge in there. So I'll tab into edit mode again, press shift A, let's add a circle. This circle, again, I want to be eight, just like the other ones. And if I zoom out, you can see it. Let's scale it down. I'm gonna rotate it on the X axis. Nope, the Y axis, I keep getting that mixed up by 90 degrees, so type in 90 and then hit enter. Let's go to three for side view. Scale that down, get it to about how you like. And see this part right here? I wanna make sure that it isn't intersecting through this because this is uh, this thing right here, this is a hinge, so it can't really be going through that. So I'll scale it down, put it somewhere near the bolt, kind of in the middle of that, but make sure there's some space there. And then I'll press E, click with my middle mouse wheel, drag it out on the X, and then go back into object mode. And you can see when we were modeling this, it kind of came through here. So to get rid of this, I'll just uh, press L in wireframe mode, select this whole thing, and then press G and X and bring it over. All right, there we go. And then I can shade that smooth again. And I think I wanna make this a little bit smaller, so I'll tab into edit mode again. And my cylinder is already selected, so I'll just scale it down with S. Scale it down a little bit more. All right, so that's that part done. So I wanna duplicate this over to the other side now. Let me just go file and save this again real quick. So I wanna scale this over to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift D, click with my middle mouse wheel, move this over, and we can do the same exact thing that we did with the bolt. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, press A and select the entire thing, and then press S, X, actually Y, and then I'll bring this over. But what I'm gonna do is type in negative one. So it flips it by negative one degrees, so it's the exact opposite, and then press Enter. And then again, shift N to recalculate the normals. And now it's an exact mirror of the other fingers here of the claw. Okay, there we go, looking pretty good. Now, one thing, there is a little bit of extra space in here. So I'm just going to select this object, tab into edit mode, I'll press three for side view and just bring this area up. All right, so the first arm is finished. Uh, we still need to rig it and put it into its position. So I'm gonna start by just putting it into its position and size. So I'm gonna box select this entire thing to select all the arm. I'm gonna go to one for front view and I will scale it down, move it up. Of course you can make it whatever size you want, but I want it to be 
just enough size so that it's going to fit in there. So I'm just scanning the whole thing. And if uh, in part one of the tutorial series, we modeled this, if this is like too big, then you may not have like any space in there. So you can just go into edit mode and scale the whole thing down, scale this down. And that way you'll have more space to fit that right in there. And of course, you can model the robot however you like. If you want to have the arms coming out of the side of it or something, be creative and make it your own if you don't want to do exactly what I'm doing. And that way it'll be more unique. All right, so here we are on side view and just a little minor thing. I think that this, I want it to be a little bit longer. Totally optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to make this area a bit longer. So what I'll do is select all these objects by holding down shift and just selecting these four objects. I'm going to go to front view and then I can tab into edit mode. And this is going to go into the multi object uh, editing. So you can see that even though these are different objects, I can edit them all at once. So now what I'll do is press Z, go into wireframe and just box select this entire area down here, press G and Z, make it a bit longer and then go back into object mode and you can see they're still all their own separate objects. That looks a lot better. I think I just wanted the arms to be a little bit longer. All right, now the finished robot that I'm creating has four arms and we've only created one, but I don't want to go ahead and duplicate the arm now because if I do that, then I'll have to rig each arm individually. So what I'm going to do is fully rig this arm and mechanically rig it so that it looks all good and it, it works properly. And then I will duplicate it after I've done that. So let's go ahead and do the mechanical rigging. We're not going to be rigging with bones. If you press shift a, there's this armature here. This is for like rigging organic characters, but I am not, I'm not going to be using this because I'm going to be doing what's called mechanical rigging. So what I'm going to do is just start off on the top here and just go down and just, uh, make all the objects work properly. And then we will parent them together and get the rig all set up. So what I'm going to do just to show you real quick is to take the 3d cursor and make it the transform pivot point. And I'll just press it right there so that you can see what I'm doing. So basically I want this to rotate like this, and then I want this to rotate like this. And then this one right here, I want this one to rotate like this. And then these are gonna rotate like this and like that. And then this one right here, in order to make the um, arms so that it can actually go around instead of just going back and forth, I want this one to rotate like this. Okay, so let's go set that up. So here's the first one. I'm just going to turn this back to uh, median point. Let's set up the first object here. So what I'm going to do is I want this to rotate on the Z axis like this. And you can see the origin point is already in the center. So if I press R and Z and just rotate that, it looks great. Now, if your object isn't like this, if maybe the origin point is over here and it's kind of like rotating kind of awkwardly, I'm going to show you how to fix this. So what I'm going to do is alt click on this loop and then press shift S and that'll bring up a bunch of different things. I'm just going to move down and click on the cursor to select it. What that will do is it will take this 3d cursor right there and it's going to bring it into the center of this thing that we selected, which is the rotating piece, the circle. Then what I can do is go into object mode. So tab into object mode. And now I want to set that origin point into the very center. It's already there, but just in case it wasn't for you, we're going to do that. So we're going to go object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now you can see if I press R and Z, it's rotating perfectly. So now it's rotating correctly, but it's kind of a pain to go R and then click Z. You just wanna hit R and just rotate it. So to make it so that it can only rotate on the Z axis, I'm gonna press the end panel, bring that up. I'm gonna go over to the item and you can see there's this location, rotation and scale. What I wanna do is uh, lock these so that it can only rotate on the Z axis. So what I'm going to do is click and hold down my mouse and bring my mouse all the way down and then let go. And now it's locked it so it can't move. It can't rotate and it can't scale, but I want it to rotate on the Z axis. So I'll unclick on this one. And now if I press R, you can see whatever position that I'm rotating it on, it's only going to rotate it on the Z axis. So if I'm like this, it's kind of hard to rotate it. So just move up or down and then rotate it or you can press R and Z if you want to. And then if I press G to try to grab it, it's not going to move. And then if I press S to try to scale it, it won't scale because it's locked. So now we're going to do that with basically all the other objects. So we'll go through this one by one. 
So let's just zoom in here. I'm going to go to this uh, object here. I'll tab into edit mode. So you may be able to guess where I want this to rotate from. I want it to rotate from this pivoting uh, cylinder right here. So to select this entire thing, I'm going to move my mouse over, press L, and that'll select the entire thing. If you want to, you can just click on this, press H to hide it in object mode, and then go back into this just so that we can see it a little bit better. And then I want it to rotate on this pivot point. So I'm going to press shift S, move my mouse down and let go. And that way the cursor will be in the center right there. We'll tab into object mode. I'm going to go right here and go object set origin and origin to 3d cursor, just like the last one. And now you can see if I rotate this, it's rotating on that. And then once again, the same exact thing, I'm going to click drag down. And then I want this to only be able to rotate on the X axis. So I'll just go to the rotation, uncheck the X. And now if I click R, you can see it's rotating perfectly. So now I'll alt H to unhide this. And you can see that actually looks realistic. It actually looks like it could rotate. And then this is going to rotate like this. And then you may be wondering what's going to happen because this can't rotate this way, but I'll show you how to do that after we're finished doing all these. Okay, let's go to the next one. So let's do the same exact thing. So you can see with this one, the cylinder is actually a part of this object. I actually want to make it a part of the other object. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'll tab into edit mode here, uh, press L to select this entire thing. I'll press P and separate by selection. So now it's its own object. And then what I can do is uh, click on this object, shift click on this object, and then hit control J and that'll join it together. There we go. Now it's a part of the next object. Now I will just uh, press three to do the face select and press L and then just make sure this one is selected. And then I'll press just like the other ones, shift S, move my mouse down, cursor to selected. And then let's go back into object mode. And then we'll go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And then once again, we need to lock these all. So I'll lock all of them. And then I just want this to rotate on the X axis. So I'll uncheck the rotation X. Now, if I rotate this, it looks realistic. It looks like it could actually rotate just like that. Okay, and then let's do that again for this one. So I want this one to only rotate around here. So for this one, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, press one to go into the vertex select and I'll alt click on this and then shift and alt and click on this. Just make sure you have that selected. And then the same thing, hopefully you've gotten it down now, but if you don't, I'll still walk you through it. So shift S, cursor to selected, then we'll tab into object mode. We'll go over here to object, set the origin, origin to 3D cursor. And then we need to lock it so that it can't rotate like back and forth. So I'll lock all of these and then just uncheck the rotation X. And now there we go. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for these two. So I will tab into edit mode here. Let's go into wireframe and just uh, A to D select, just L and make sure you have this selected. We'll go shift S move my cursor down, cursor to selected, go into object mode, and then we'll go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. We'll lock all of these except the X one. And yeah, we want to uh, lock the X because the X is this way. You can see the grid, that's the red one. But if for some reason, if your object is rotated, you might want to do the Y axis. But for this case, it's the X. There we go. And then just one more time, we're going to do the same thing. So we'll go into wireframe L select this one, shift S, move my mouse down, cursor to selected, just click on that. We'll go into object mode, tab back into object mode, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And then lock all of these, oops, lock all of these except the X. And now the mechanical rigging is almost done. These parts all work really well, but all these parts don't work together. So I'm going to show you how to parent them so that they all work together. Let's just go file and save this again. And after this, this is really cool. It's really fun to play around with. So let's select this, shift select this, that we have both of these selected and you can't move them because I locked them, but we want both of these to move with this because if I move this, obviously these parts need to move with it. So I'm gonna shift select this and then lastly, 
shift and select this. So that way these have the orange outline, but this one has the yellow outline because it's the active object. Then what you're going to do is press control P and control P is the shortcut key for parenting. And I'm just going to click set parent to object. So what that does is now these two claws, they're parented to this one. So if I rotate this, boom, there we go. So now this is rotating and the rotating with it. I can just rotate this up, but then you can see these can rotate by themselves as well. So this is a, uh, this is really cool. Once it's all rigged up, it's really fun to play around with and animate. So I'm just going to control Z that I'm just going to keep on pressing control Z until that's back. Now I want to be able to set this back to its original position just in case, like if I'm animating it and then I want to put it back to its position. So what I need to do is shift click on all these objects and I want these objects, the position that they're in right now, the rotation, I want those to be at their default position. So I'm going to shift click on all these so that they're all selected and then to apply this so that they're at their default position, I'm going to press control a and that'll apply things. And I'm going to apply rotation. Now, just to show you what I mean, you can see that the rotation here has been moved to 180 degrees. But again, with all these selected, if I press control a and apply the rotation, now that rotation value is set to zero. So now blender knows that these objects, that's the default position. So, you know, like a T pose when you're animating a character or something, they might be in a T pose. That's the default position. We want the default position for this robot to be just like that. So now if I just rotate these, and then I'm like, okay, now that I've rotated them, I want them to go back to their default position. I'm going to shift select on all of them and press alt R and alt R is going to set them back to their default position. So you can remember by alt R for rotation, R is for rotation. And there we go. Now they're back. So when you're animating it and stuff, that can be really helpful. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep on parenting these. So these are parented to this. This one, when we, when we move this, we want this one to be parented to it. So can you guess what we're going to do? We're going to click on this shift, click on this. So that This one is the last one because we want this to move that one. So I'll press control P now and set parent to object. And now you can see if I just click on this and rotate it. Now the whole thing is moving. So now I can rotate all of these. And then if I want to bring them back to their default position with all of them selected alt R and now they're at their default position. So I'll do the same thing. Click on this one. Now shift click on this one, control P set parent to object. And then this one, click on this one, shift click on this one, control P set parent to object. And then the last one, just in case you want to move the arms for some reason, I'm going to select this one, shift select this one, control P set parent to object. And now uh, you can, uh, move this all around. So this one's going to rotate. Let me just save this again, since we just finished that don't want it to crash. And then you can rotate these all around. This is really fun to play around with. Um, cause yeah, it acts like kind of like a real mechanical thing. And then again, once you're done playing around with this, you can select everything, all these, and then press alt R and now they're back to their default position. All right, so now that we've finished rigging this, we can make the other three arms, and that way we don't have to do as much work to re-rig them. So I'm gonna have one arm on the front, which is gonna be like, have like a laser cannon or something, and then the arm on the back is gonna be like maybe a scanner thing, maybe it's like a, a rock sampler kind of thing, something like that, and then on this side, I want to be the same arm. So we don't have to remodel it, what we can just do is duplicate it and move it over. So I'm going to just B and box select this entire thing. And then the last object that I'm going to select, I'm going to hold down shift and select this object as the last one. Now I'm going to go to front view with one on the number pad and I'll press shift D shift D will duplicate this. And I want to just move this over. So I will press X, move it over. Let's just zoom in here, press G to grab X on the X axis and just move it just so that it's kind of the same. There's just a tiny bit of space in here. But you can see that they're not mirrored properly because they're both on this side, uh, this hinge here. If you want to leave it like that, that's okay, but I'm going to flip them. So what I'm going to do is press S, X, and then type in negative one enter. And now you can see it's flipped them around and we may need to just readjust this a little bit. So if you need to just move that around and then once again, you can see it's working just 
like the other one so I can just move these around and it's working really great. And if you wanted if you wanted these to be like legs, you could maybe make him running. He's going to be running. There we go. Do 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 do. do. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, but I don't want these to be legs, but that is pretty cool if you want to do that. So I'm going to select everything, press Alt R and it'll jump back to its default position. Okay, so now we have two more to make, but we can just use the same ones. So I'm just going to box select one of these, doesn't matter which one, and shift and select all these. I'm going to press uh, Control 7, so Control Number Pad 7, and that'll go to the bottom view. And then what I can do is press Shift D, move this over and just bring it to the center back, just like that. Now for the back of this one, I don't want to have a claw. I want to have some sort of like analyzing equipment or maybe some like rock sampler or something. I don't know exactly what it is, but something cool. So I don't want there to be these claws here. So I'll just select this, delete it, select this, delete it. And then I do want to keep this one, but I'm just going to have that equipment that I'm going to add just right down there. But you can see I don't want this to be on the side here just because I don't think it looks very good. So I want to have this one be in the very center of it. So we're going to do a little bit of modeling to change this. So let's press N and make sure this piece is selected and I will turn off all of these. Let's just press G and then click with my mouse wheel. I'm just going to move it to the very center of this arm right here or a leg, whatever it is. Now I need to delete this area right here. So I'll just tab into edit mode, go into wireframe and we'll just box select this area and X and delete it. And then there's a little lip right here. So I'll alt select that, delete that. And then this, I'll just uh, alt select this loop, scale it down. And then I can press F and fill that. Okay. So now it's even, but we don't have a hinge here. So we need to go in and edit this and make a little hinge. So let's tab into edit mode. I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. I'm going to scroll my mouse out to make two and then I'll click and then right click to set it right there. Now I want there to be a little bit more thickness. So I'll press S and X, make it a little bit thicker and then I can X and delete faces and now it's deleted. So now we have an open area for the hinge. So let's alt click on this shift and alt click on this. And we're going to scale it down. Actually, let me just select this object in object mode, press eight to hide it, just to move it out of the way for the time being, and then go back into edit mode right here. So let's press E and extrude out some more vertices and then hit S and scale it in. And I don't want to scale it in towards itself. So again, shift X and that'll just scale it down in the axes that we want. And then there's a really cool thing you can do to merge these two together. What I'm going to do is uh, press F3 and that'll bring up the search and then I can type in bridge edge loops. And if for some reason the search isn't coming up, you can press control E and then you can find it here, bridge edge loops. It's the third one down bridge edge loops. And you need to make sure that when you're doing this, there's the same amount of vertices on either side. But when you do this, you can see it's joined them together. So it's really cool. It's way easier than manually doing it. So let's just add some loop cuts in here now. So I'll press control R, add a loop cut there, control R, add another loop cut in there, control R, add a loop cut in there. So that's looking good, but we need to uh, make an area where the hinge can actually move and not have this, you know, box thing in the way. So what I'm going to do is uh, press L and select this and we're just going to hide it and move it out of the way. Let's go to one for front view. Just box select these vertices and then press G and Z and bring it up out of the way. Now I can Alt H this and now we can kind of see what we're working with. So I'll just Alt select this loop, bring it down, bring it pretty close to the other one. Okay, and now what I want to do is click on this right here and then shift click on this one and then click on this one and shift click on this one. So if you need to go to the other side, you can do that. Just make sure you have those four selected and I'm going to press F to fill a face right there. So now that this is filled to a face, what I want to do is take the other two sides and extrude them down. So first what I'm going to do is add some loop cuts. So I'll control R add a loop cut here, control R add a loop cut there. And then you can see this is looking really weird. So let's add another loop cut there. And then we're going to have to add two. So add another one, drag it down, 
Okay, there we go. Let's go file and save this again. Okay, so now that's looking really good. We just need to take these two open areas and extrude them down in there. So let's alt and select this loop, hold down shift and alt select this loop. And then I can press E Z and bring it down. And there we go. Now this circle thing here, it's a little bit offset. So let's just tab into edit mode. Uh, press A to deselect everything L and just select this piece and then we'll just move it over a little bit. And I think this side here is a little bit thicker actually. So if this is happening for you, you can go into wireframe, press B and then middle click and drag to deselect this area. And then we can press S to scale X on the X axis and just make that a little bit less thick and then press G and X and bring it over. All right, so there we go. Hopefully you were able to follow that. So now let's press Alt H and that'll unhide that one piece that we had. Now these areas right here are too long. So let's tab into edit mode, select this whole thing, press S X and just scale it up so it's a bit fatter. So it fills up those areas, just kind of move it into the center there. And there we go, a nice hinge. So now let's go ahead and remodel what we're gonna do here. So I'll tab into edit mode. I'm just gonna add a loop cut right here just bring it kind of like there. Then I will go into wireframe and just box select this bottom area and press X and delete vertices. Okay, so now I can Alt and select this side. We'll just bring it down. And I wanna make it a little bit thicker so that we have some areas to like put some tubes and things like that. So I'm going to press E and extrude this down, Z and just bring it down. And then this side right here, we're gonna bring this out a little bit. So let's just bring this down, maybe a little bit longer. Okay, like that. And then let's just uh, press three to go to face select. And I'm going to select this face. And you can see I added a bevel there. So I'm going to shift select all the parts of the bevel and then extrude that out with E. Okay, just give it a little bit of thickness so that we have some room to put the equipment. And then we need to sharpen this up, obviously. So let's uh, add a loop cut with Control R, Control R, add another loop cut. Control R at another loop cut here. And then just to sharpen that up, I'll add another loop cut there with Control R. Now you can see if you go down here, there is this open hole here. Uh, it may not be here for you, but if it is, I'm going to uh, click on this, shift click on this, and then I can press F. And it's just gonna go along here and fill all these. So if I press F, 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 and F, now it just matched that up. Um, with the bevels. All right, there we go. So now we can go and add some different like little test tubes and different things, whatever we're gonna add here. What I'm gonna do is go way back up here, go to the top here and this thing, I'm gonna select it, Shift D, bring it down. I'm just gonna use it because it looks cool. So I'm gonna bring it way down here. I can press period on the number pad to hop over to it. And let's just move it up so that it's like right up against this. Now I want it to be pointed down, so I'm gonna press R, X, and then type in 180, and that way it'll flip it 180 degrees, so it's instead of pointing it up, it's gonna point all the way down, and then press Enter. Now I wanna put this over here, so I'll just move it over, move it down, and this is too long, we'll get rid of that later, and then move it in so that it's touching it, so it's connected. So let's just move this over here so it's kind of in front, and then this is too long, so we'll tab into edit mode, Alt, select this, G, Z, bring it down, period on the number pad to zoom into it, and then I can press F to fill that face. And then it's stretching, so what we'll do is just press Control B, add a bevel right there. All right, there we go. So I wanna add another one that's a little bit shorter. So I will select this, press Shift D, click my middle mouse wheel down and bring it over. And then I'll press, uh, and then I'll tab into edit mode, select the whole thing and press S, Z, make it a bit fatter and then move it up a bit with G and Z, bring it up a little bit like that. Okay, there we go. So now we have a second one. It's starting, it almost looks like a little ray gun or something. So now I want to add another little thing. Let's just go back up here. I'm gonna just snag this thing right here. So the ones that we made right here, I'm just gonna snag one of them. I'll press Shift D, bring it down. Just move it into place, period, on the number pad to jump over to it. And this hole is gonna be pointed down. So let's press R and X and 90. Okay, 
bring this over here. I want this to be on the other side. And let's just bring this over here. G and Z, bring it down. Okay, and then I want to make it longer, so I'll tab into edit mode. Just box select this, go into wireframe, and B and box select this area. G to grab, Z to move it up. Just move it up there. And then I want to add two more of these, two smaller ones uh, on this side and this side. So I'll press Shift D, move it over. S to scale it down. Just put one right there. Shift D this. And then X to move it, oh, Y, move it over here. Maybe make this one going up a little bit more. And then I want to add one more thing. I want to add like a pointy thing coming out here. So what I'll do is click right here to set the 3D cursor. I'll press Shift A and let's add a circle. Just make sure that this is set to eight, that's good. And you can't see it right now because it's way too big. So I'll just scale it down. We'll put it right in there. And then I'll press G and Z, bring it down. Let's tab into edit mode. And then I need to make sure I'm in vertex select and I'll press E to extrude, Z and bring it up. And then I'm gonna bring it out to like this far and then I'll press E, Z, bring it out again and S and scale it down and then F to fill that. And then if I add a subsurf by going add modifier, subdivision surface, now it smooths it out. I wanna add some loop cuts here. So I'll press control R, add a loop cut there, control R, add a loop cut there, and then shade that smooth. So now I want to join these all together into one object. So I'm gonna just select all of them, hold down shift, select all the different pieces. And then once they're all selected, the last one I'm gonna select is shift select this. So that that's the last one. And then I'll press control J so that they're all joined onto the bigger piece. And there we go, now they're all one piece. Now if I rotate this, you can see it's not rotating properly because we need to go back and lock these. So press N to open up this, lock them all. And then the rotation has to be the X. So just turn that off. And now it's rotating properly. And this one's working great as well. All right, there's that done. So now I just have one more. So I want to uh, duplicate these, bring them over to the front. So I'm gonna shift select all these. And now I will press shift D, Y and move them over. We'll go three for side view and just zoom in here and move them over just like that. And then I can also press N to close this side panel here. So now we just have one more. This one I am going to have like a gun with like three little holes to shoot, like maybe a laser gun or something. So let's click on this. We'll press period to zoom over to it. I'm just gonna tab into edit mode here. And then I just wanna delete most of this stuff. So I'm gonna press control R, add a loop cut right there. And then everything else below it, I want to delete. So I'll just go into wireframe, A to D select, just box select this area, and then X and delete vertices. Okay, so that just got rid of that. Let's alt click on this. And again, file and save. Just make sure you save that. Okay, let's press G and Z, move this down. And then to fill this face, I'm gonna press E and then S, and then I'll press E and S again, make it even smaller, and then F to fill that face. All right, now to add those little laser cannon things, I'm gonna go way back up here and snag some of the stuff that we used to. Press Shift D, bring it down. Just move it into place. And then I'm gonna press uh, R, X, 90, enter. So that way it rotates it up so it's pointed down. Bring it over here. I'm gonna press control seven, control number pad seven. So it'll go to bottom view. Move this over here. Let's scale it up because you know it's a gun so it should be pretty big. And I'm actually gonna move this to the front of it here. And then we'll have two back ones behind it. Let's press G and Z and bring this down. Okay. Tab into edit mode here. I want to make this longer. So I'll box select this area, press G and Z and bring it up. Okay. And then G and Z and bring the whole thing down a little bit. Let's press control and number pad seven. And I want to duplicate these so that there's two more of them. So I'll press shift D, move my mouse over, just bring it like that. So that they're kind of touching and then shift D, move this over. And I can hold down middle mouse wheel, bring it over. Now you can see there's an empty space there, but this is touching. So I'm gonna shift click on this, 
press G and then X and move them over. And then just move these up a little bit and move this one down a little bit. There we go. So now we have a little, it, the robot has a little blaster, blaster gun thing. Now you can see these don't go very far. I want the holes there to go way back farther. So this is pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna click on this, shift click on this and shift click on this. I'll tab into edit mode. And then what I'm gonna do is press three to go to face select, select this face. You can't really see it, but if you go inside there, you can see it. And then shift select the other faces. Okay, and then I'll press G and Z and bring them way up inside the object. There we go, just bring them way up, however far you want, not too far, not outside of it, but just, just like that. So we need to join these onto this one. So I'll shift select all these three, and then lastly, shift select this, and then to join them together, it's control J, and now they're all one object, and there we go, now it's rotating, and this is rotating, that looks really good. All right, so the legs are finished. Now I know this tutorial has probably been going on for quite a while, yep it has, but I do want to rig the head so that the head can rotate around, and then I want to have a master control so that you can move the entire robot together. I'm gonna press Shift C so that the 3D cursor's in the center there. So let's press Shift A now. I'm gonna add a circle, and this circle settings, I want it to be a bit smooth, so I'm gonna change it to like 30 or something. Close that. Uh, let's tab into edit mode and scale this out. So I'm gonna scale it up in edit mode. So I'll tab back into object mode now. Actually, I do want it to be a little bit smaller. So I'll tab into edit mode, S and scale it down. And also I'll press G and Z and bring it up a little bit. So now it's just right next to the robot's head. Now I wanna have two of these because one is gonna rotate the robot's head and the other is going to move around the entire robot together. So I'm going to press Shift D and then right click so it hops back to its default position. I'll tab into edit mode now and press G and Z and bring this down kind of to the robot's body and then press S and scale it up bigger. And that way we know that it's the entire controller for the robot. Okay, so now we have these two different rig controllers. Let's go ahead and rig the head now. This is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to shift and click on all the objects that are part of the head. So this, this one, this one, and this one, and also the little gear here, because that's his neck. Okay, and then once you have all these selected, uh, select this one last. So shift select this one last, so that this one is yellow and these ones are orange, and then press control P and set parent to object. And then let's click on this one, now, if we rotate this or grab it or scale it, it's going to move the head around with it, but we only want the head to rotate uh, circular. So let's press N to open this up. I'm going to lock all these and then just unlock the rotation Z because the Z axis will make it rotate around like this. So Z, and now if I rotate this, now the robot's head can look around. Awesome. Okay, so now the last thing that we're gonna do before this part is up is we're going to parent the entire thing so that we can animate the robot moving all together. So what I'm gonna do is select all the parts of the body. So I'll shift select all the different parts, uh, this bottom area and the grate here, okay? Now I want to shift select the top parts of the limbs because the top parts of the limbs move the other parts of the limbs. So I just want to parent these. I don't want to parent the other ones because if I parent the other ones to the master egg, that can mess up the other parent. So I'm just going to click on these ones. Okay, so now we have the top of the legs and the body. And then I don't want to click on any parts of the head. I just want to click on the controller of the head. So now we have all those selected. And then lastly, I'm going to shift select on the master control. So that's selected last, so it's yellow. I'll press control P and we're gonna set parent to object. Now, if I click on this, I can rotate the entire robot. So if you want to make the entire thing go back to its default position, what you can do is select all the other objects. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, also these, and the grate here. So just select all of these objects and this one and this one here. All of these objects, select all of them and you're gonna press Control A and apply the rotation. So now, if I rotate this, rotate this, 
let's say rotate this one. So let's say I'm animating this and then I want to put it back to the default position. What I can do is now select all of them and hit Alt R and it'll go back to the position and it's not going to mess up any of those little pieces because these are the default position for those pieces. So that's going to wrap it up for part two of this robot. In the next part, we're going to be doing all the materials and lighting. So by the end of the next part, you're going to have a completely finished robot model that you can render out and it'll be a finished image. And then after that, we're going to be doing the animation in the next part. So join me in part three, where we're going to be doing the lighting and materials right up on the screen. You can just click on it right there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next part.